أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين وبائث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على النبي الأمي العربي الهاشمي القرشي العبد المؤيد والرسول المسدد الذي سمي في السماء بأحمد وفي الأراضين بأبي القاسم مصطفى محمد ثم الصلاة والسلام على آله آل الله واللعن الدائم على عدائهم عداء الله إلى قيام يوم الله قال الله تعالى في محكم كتابه أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم حاميم والكتاب المبين إنا جعلناه قرآنا عربيا لعلكم تأقلون وإنه في أم الكتاب لدينا لعلي حكيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته respected brothers and sisters congratulations on the arrival of the holy month of Ramadan May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this tawfiq during this blessed month to inshallah purify our self and elevate our level of spirituality and to reflect more on the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran. And welcome to the short lessons from Al-Mizan. Inshallah, uh, in these nights, inshallah, I will be at your service with, uh, inshallah, talking about the... Uh, teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran according to the tafsir of Al-Mizan by Allama Taba Tabai rahmatullahi alayh. Inshallah we will have 10 sessions talking about uh, different aspects from and different subjects from tafsir Al-Mizan inshallah starting tonight and uh, I try to uh, give you inshallah a different conception a different worldview from Quran. First of all, always during the holy month of Ramadan, all of us, we go back to Qur'an. We think about Qur'an. We hold the uh, gatherings about Qur'an. We recite Qur'an. We do khatm of Qur'an. But really, and actually, if you look at the Islamic Ummah, you see that Isla Qur'an is really abandoned. Qur'an is isolated, is abandoned by us. If we look at the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if we look at Qur'an, we see that yes, we use Qur'an as a decorative decorative, you know, element in our houses, or use Qur'an as a ceremonial element in our events on different occasions. But the reality of Qur'an, if you look at the Islamic Ummah, you can't witness that the reality of Qur'an exists among people. Yes, we use Qur'an, we always recite Qur'an on the uh, wedding ceremony, on the funeral procession, okay, and ceremony. But after that, after the end of this ceremonial process with Qur'an, you see that if you look at the ethics of people, knowledge of people, actions of people, the social life of people, marital life of people, okay? You can't witness that Qur'an is really alive in the lives of people. And that is a very big problem. That's a major problem, brothers and sisters. And because of that, we always see this distance between Islamic Ummah and the reality of Qur'an made too many crises for us. If you look at the history of Islamic nation, you see that the decline of the Islamic nation, Islamic civilization, begins when people start to put Qur'an aside. In this, inshallah, sessions, we try to, uh, you know, uh, get your attraction, inshallah, and your attention, inshallah, rahman and focus more on the teachings of Qur'an. Because you know, as all of you know, Qur'an is the last, last teaching of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the human beings. Because Rasulullah is the last prophet. So prophethood ended after Rasulullah. So the last words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, believes that it is necessary for the human beings you can find that in Qur'an. So it means that everything which is necessary for the life of the human being 
until the day of judgment is in the holy of Quran so if you look at Quran like that you will find that okay I have my daily life but I don't refer to Quran you know usually I don't feel the necessity of that this is because we are brothers and sisters really far from Quran we have neglected Quran this is the problem within the Islamic Ummah inshallah we want to uh, talk about different subjects because this is the different nights of the holy month of Ramadan and maybe our viewers would be different on different nights so for each night inshallah I will pick a different and uh, distinguished subject inshallah but the whole idea is to say that Quran has too many words has too many to say about our life and if we neglect Quran we are destroying our reality in our life it doesn't mean that we're serving Quran by going to Quran no we're serving ourselves but if we have to understand that we have to witness that this is an intuition we need to gain that okay first of all inshallah in the first session the first question is what Quran provides for us what do we need from Quran what are the teachings of Quran tonight I'm going to talk about four things that Quran and Holy Quran gives us in its teachings and then inshallah I will talk about the Tafsir al-Mizan and why we are going to Tafsir al-Mizan and referring people to Tafsir al-Mizan by Allah Mutawatabai the first thing brothers and sisters that Quran gives us is a whole understanding about existence a world view a conception you know all the philosophers all the thinkers throughout the history of the human race they tried to give the human beings a conception Aristotle Plato you know Kant Descartes you know Hegel all of those people Mullah Sadra Ibn Sina all of those people they try to give people a conception a worldview what is a conception and worldview it is a kind of understanding and perceiving the reality of this universe because for example if you believe that the reality of this universe will end after you die so this is a kind of conception if you believe that after you died you will return to this material world it's another conception another world view it makes another lifestyle and if you believe that after this life you will have an eternal life on the day of judgment it makes everything you know different so the first thing that Quran gives us is not just ahkam or just some detailed ethical uh, laws and regulations and recommendations no before everything Quran gives you what a conception a worldview and we believe and you can find that in Quran that the worldview that Quran gives us is the monotheistic worldview the Tawhidi worldview a worldview and a universe which is completely dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and inshallah I will talk about this in the following nights inshallah rahman so the first thing is Quran gives us this worldview and Quran brothers and sisters concentrates on the reality Quran always always admonishes those people who are in illusion who are in khial in just in just imaginary you know uh, conceptions this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I don't like mukhtal the person who just you know it just brings images in, in 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 his mind and doesn't think about the reality of this universe so the first approach of Quran is to give Muslim the reality so if Quran recommends people to become Muslim to become submitted this submission is the submission to reality 
Quran says this is the reality of the universe. This is the reality of heavens, of the earth, of the universe, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of his qualities, of the angels, of the prophets, of the imams, of the human being, of the nature and everything. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran says in Surah Fussilat, verse 53, أَوْضُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَقْ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ خَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ الْحَقِّ سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ الْحَقِّ And we will show them our signs throughout the universe as well as in their own souls. We're going to show them the reality of this world, this, the, the real signs of this world. To prove that, حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ الْحَقِّ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth. Is the reality of this world. So the first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us is what? Is a real conception of this universe. And inshallah in the following sessions I will get to some of those uh, real conceptions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides in Quran. Okay, the next thing is what? Is an ethical and a spiritual model. Quran, according to Allah, he believes that Quran gives us a unique kind of a spiritual and ethical method, which was unheard of. You cannot find that in any book, in any prior religion, in any teaching of any prophet or any philosopher. This is new in Quran. And this is somehow the reality of what? Of Khatamul Anbiya. The end of the prophethood. So the second thing is what is an ethical model that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us in Quran. The third thing which is so important and inshallah we will come to this third element and teaching of Quran is a body of laws and regulations both individual and in the social aspect. Quran gives us individual and social penal codes, constitutions, laws, regulations. And this is why we believe that Quran talked about the society, talk about, talked about the governance, talked about the relationship between people, talked about the relationship between the communities of the people. And that is so interesting, inshallah. One night I will talk about the reality of the society in Quran according to Tafsir al Miza. Okay, this is the third thing. So we have a theological aspect, a worldview. We have the ethical aspect and a spiritual aspect. And we have an aspect about the law and ju jurisprudence and regulations. And Quran gives us, gives, gives all these teachings as a whole. So if you hold on to the whole teaching of Quran, you will be uh, achieve what the real eternity and the real salvation. And the fourth thing that Quran gives us, which was emphasized by Shaykh Mutahari, that is so beautiful, is that Quran is not just talking to us like a teacher or like a scientific book. No, Quran talks to the hearts of people. So Quran gives us these teachings, gives us this model, gives us this spiritual model, model, gives us this worldview and conception. But at the same time, Quran tries to prepare our heart to accept this kind of teachings and laws and regulations. This is why in Quran we recite this Beautiful verse. أَوْضُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ اللَّهُ نَزَّلَ أَحْسَنَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابًا مُتَشَابِهًا مَثَانِيَ تَقْشِعِرُ مِنْهُ جُلُودُ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ ثُمَّ تَلِينُ جُلُودُهُمْ وَقُلُوبُهُمْ إِلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you this, this kind of teaching and the best word that has ever uh, brought to the people and then if you listen to the recitation of this Quran what happens 
the people, the mu'mineen, the believers who, who, who listen to the recitation of Qur'an, they feel a shivering in their skins because of the fear and the grandeur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us this shivering. Okay? But after they get acquainted and get familiar with the teaching of Qur'an, they ponder about the meanings they ponder about the meanings of Allah's remembrance. Their hearts and their skins, therefore, becomes what? Feels tranquility, finds tranquility. So Quran is talking to the heart of people, gives you that itminan, tranquility, that peace, that solace. Makes you weep, makes you cry makes you think this is why Shahid Mutahari in one of his books he says that this is the difference between philosophical and religious worldview religious worldview gives people love passion tendency to do good jobs to refrain from transgression okay so this is the fourth thing in Quran and that is the, the, the beauty of Quran is that this fourth aspect can be found in all the other three aspects it means when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to us about the theology and about the worldview talks to our hearts when he talks about the ethical and spiritual aspect talks to our heart then even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, is going to oblige something upon us so it's, it's hard for us okay it's kitab it's obligatory, it's somehow hard, it has difficulties. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you that peace and ease by saying that what? If you do so, you will find the reality of taqwa. So Quran is not a book of constitutions. It's not a book of a scientific book. It's not a book of a story. It is a book of guidance through worldview, theology, jurisprudence, law, ethics, and all those things. And through about the stories of the prophets, the feelings of the prophets, all the trials and turbulences that all the prophets and the sincere servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala went through. Okay? So this is the fourth aspect, inshallah. And this is just, I'm just talking about four elements. There are too many other things in Quran that we have to reflect on. So, the next question, very short, for the first night, why Al-Mizan? Why Tafsir Al-Mizan? Brothers and sisters, among all those Tafsir that we have today, Tafsir Al-Mizan, we can say, is the, the, the best one. A complex of Al-Ma'arif al ilahiya all the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because Allah Taba Taba'i, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, He tried so hard to give us that worldview, that ethical system, that jurisprudential system, and give us that the, the, the meaning of what? Of that encouragement aspect and, 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 and the, the passion aspect of the Quran. And Allah Matabatabai, if you go to Al-Mizan, inshallah, after this session, inshallah, I, uh, I expect you to, inshallah, go and uh, read the uh, Tafsir al-Mizan because some of the uh, Tafsir al-Mizan is 20 volumes okay and uh, it's an interpretation of all the verses of all the verses and the uh, chapters of Quran but as far as I know just a part of this Tafsir it has been translated into English and that is even so 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 useful and beneficial for you inshallah okay in Al-Mizan, Allah Taba Taba'i has a collection of reflection on the whole reality of Islam, according to Quran. It's very well organized. It's completely connected. And if you start Tafsir Al-Mizan from the first chapter of Quran, you are connected to even last chapters of Quran. Why? Because he believes in a special method of interpretation of Quran. He believes in tafsir al-Qur'ani bil-Qur'an. He believes that Qur'an, because Qur'an is the tabiyan of everything, Qur'an itself is the explanation of everything. Okay? 
and is the guidance for the mankind. So he says that we can understand Quran by Quran. So if you go to Tafsir al-Mizan and you start with the Surah al-Baqarah, a Surah al-Hamd as the first al-Fatiha, as the first chapter of Quran, you see that he explains the Surah al-Fatiha, the verse Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen by other verses of Quran, which is a very difficult job to do. It's so hard, but he could do that. He could do that. So by Al-Mizan, if you go to Tafsir al-Mizan, you're leaving with Quran. In every verse, you're leaving other verses of Quran. That is so beautiful. So if you are reciting, okay, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Ar-Rahman, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin, okay, Maliki Yawmiddin. Or Dhalika Al-Kitabu La Rayba Fi Hudan Lil Muttaqeen, Surah Al-Baqarah. Okay, if you are reflecting on this verse, according to Al-Mizan, you're not just confined to this verse. Allah Matabatabai opens the gate of Quran for you. So if you want to understand Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, you will go to the whole ocean of Quran. Inshallah, I will come to that kind of interpretation of Allah Matabatabai. So, Tafsir al-Mizan is the tafsir, uh, tafsir of Quran by Quran, by the verses of Quran. It is very well organized and especially it talks about the fundamental teachings of Quran, which was, you know, somehow neglected, even by some scholars and some tafasir. So he believes that Quran is giving us a whole teaching that by, by, by those we can have a lifestyle, a prosperous lifestyle with dignity, with spirituality, with order, with power, with mercy, and everything. And if you see that in Islamic communities and in Islamic ummah, we cannot find that, that prosperity, we cannot find that, that mercy, that dignity, that power. It is because we have neglected Quran. We don't know about the teachings of Quran. Okay. In Tafsir al-Mizan, you can find more than, maybe more than 20, 100 important subjects. Thousands of subjects, of, but maybe more than 20 or 30, 100, 100 of, 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 of important and primary subjects. And inshallah, during these nights, we're going to talk about, uh, including this night, we're going to talk about 10 important subjects, which is in line, uh, as far as I know, with the life and the mindset of the viewers of this session, because we can talk about uh, something even more difficult than that, but I'm going to stick with the normal uh, subjects, which can be understandable for all of those people who are viewing these sessions. So, before we end this session, Allah Tabatabai, in the introduction of Tafsir al-Mizan, he says that about Ayat al-Ahqam, Ayat about jurisprudence, because Fuqaha and, ju and the jurists, they reflected for you know hundreds of years on those verses. I'm not going to go into the verses about Ahkam. He talks about the philosophy of Ahkam, and inshallah, I will get to that, like marriage, like the, uh, the ban of, 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 of alcohol and things like that. But he's not going to dissect Ahkam in Tafsir al mizan he says that I'm going to talk about an area of Quran which is not too much talked about. And he says that I'm going to cover seven areas in Quran in Tafsir al-Mizan. And I will give you the list of these seven areas for this session, inshallah. In the following sessions, we're going to talk about those different subjects according to Tafsir al-Mizan. He says the first thing, that I'm going to talk about in Tafsir al-Mizan is what? Is the matters concerning the names of Allah and His attributes like His life, knowledge, power, hearing, sight, and oneness, etc. As for the person of Allah, you will find that the Quran believes that He needs no description. And that is so beautiful about the, 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 the level of tasbih for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing that he's going to talk about is the matters concerning the divine actions, actions of Allah, like creation, 
order, will, wish, guidance, leading astray, decree, measure, compulsion, delegation of power, pleasure, displeasure, and other similar actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third thing is what? The matters concerned with the intermediary, intermediary links between Allah and man. Those things that intermediate between Allah and the human being. And that is a very interesting subject. I will, inshallah, mention some of the uh, realities who intercede and intermediate between Allah and the human being. Yes. Uh, Yes, between Allah and man, like the, 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 the hijab, the qalam, the throne, the, the, the arsh, the chair, the kursi, the inhabited house, the heavens, the earth, the angel, the sat Satan, and the jinns. Okay, the fourth thing is what? The details about man before he came to this world. Al-insan qabla dunya And that is a very beautiful um, discussion about hubud. What happened to Adam and Havva? And it's so difficult to perceive because it's a very high level discussion by Allah. And how they have been descended to the earth. The fourth, the fifth thing is what? The matters related to the man in this life. Al-insan fit dunya. Like the history of mankind, knowledge of his self, the foundation of society, the prophethood and the... And, and the, the, the revelation, the inspiration, the book, and the religion, and law, and so on and so forth. The sixth <clears throat> thing that is going to talk about in Quran is the knowledge about man after he departs from this world. Al-insan ba'd al-dunya. Like the discussion of barzakh, and the ma'ad, al-qiyama, al-jannah, al-nar, and things like that. And the final discussion is what? The matters about human character under this head and, and under this heading come the various stages through which the friends of Allah pass in their spiritual journey the levels of the friends and the sincere servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and here he talks about the purification of nafs one of the most important subjects in tafsir al mizan like submission faith benevolence humility purity of intention and other virtues as you See, brothers and sisters, it's a complex of teachings. Unfortunately, we abandon Quran and we are listening to others, other philosophies, other people, modern ideas. And we think that we can reach somehow, and sometimes, we, we think that we can reach that solace and peace through those words. Whereas Quran is here. We have access to Quran, but we have abandoned it. Quran. Inshallah, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, really, I really ask Him, you know, with my heart, to give this, to give us this tawfiq to understand Quran, to understand this, you know, uh, message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to us. Do we really deserve that? Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, He is talking to us. Inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us this tawfiq to reflect more on the holy book of Quran and his teachings inshallah. Inshallah in the following nights we uh, will go deeper in the teachings of Quran and inshallah I ask you to be with me in these sessions. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina Muhammad wa alihi al-tahirin.